dear audience and dear online viewers welcome to this live broadcast from the norwegian russian border city of Kirkenes, a hub for international cooperation at least historically as you saw examples from in this intro video my name is marit jakobsen and i'm margrethe alnes and together we will host this show on behalf of the Norwegian Barnes Secretariat. And with us here in the room, we have the audience who are participants in the seminar Backyard Residencies, Conversations in the North. <coughs> we will introduce successful projects from the borderland, talk to invited guests and discuss both the present situation and elaborate on future possibilities. You can interact in this uh, broadcast by writing your comments in the chat. But before we start with the program, uh, we would like to present our activities uh, related to the Arctic Arts Summit this year. Yes, because one of the reasons why we are here today is the Arctic Arts Summit which will take place for the third time ever later this month in Whitehorse, Canada. The Norwegian Secretariat, more specifically me, has attended the two previous summits in Hashta, Norway and in Rovaniemi, Finland. And I'm also looking forward to attending this year and I hope to see many of you in person in Whitehorse, Canada. In connection with the summit, our Canadian friends have asked us to host this event. We want all of you to get some more understanding when it comes to the cooperation between people in the Barnes region. Let's have a look at the short video to see why it is so natural for people to cooperate in this area. Hi guys, uh, we are now in the Pasvik Valley, uh, which is quite close to my hometown, Kirkenes. It takes about um, an hour for people to cross the border and, and visit the neighboring town uh, in Russia, which is called Nikel, which is just over there. And in normal uh, circumstances, it's very normal for Norwegians, people in Kirkenes, to go to Nickel uh, to do some shopping, to visit uh, restaurants, to fill up the engine with uh, cheap uh, gasoline and so on. And it's also very common in Kirkenes that people from Nickel come to do their shopping, uh, the Russians. You can see that uh, when you go to Kirkenes that uh, there are always a lot of Russians uh, uh, in the cafes, in the shops, and, and so on. So, um, we really miss that. Uh, what we are hoping for now is that uh, the situation will uh, go back to normal again, that the war will end, and that people in Nickel and in Kirkenes can come visit each other again. <laughs> yeah, so, and by the way, the moose was for real. It actually came that day when we went to film this video. It was a bit scary, but we managed to train it, so it ran across the road and everything was okay. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of wildlife also in our, uh, in our area. So uh, I mentioned uh, earlier already that uh, Margrethe and I, we both work for the Norwegian Baron Secretariat. So what exactly is the Norwegian Baron Secretariat doing? First and foremost, we administer a grant program for people-to-people -people cooperation between Norwegian and Russian partners here in the Barents region. And it's mainly funded by the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The grant program's thematic fields are culture and sports, 
education and competence, business and entrepreneurship, media and information, civil society and environmental protection, which we tried to do with the moose in the video here. <laughs> Youth and indigenous peoples are prioritized target uh, groups across all of these um, thematic fields. But also, we serve as a resource and competence center for decision makers, researchers, media, and of course for our project uh, organizers. For 30 years, we've been here to support uh, cross-border cooperation. But at the moment, we face the most severe crisis for this cooperation uh, that we have ever experienced. All cooperation with official Russian institutions and organizations is put on hold at the moment. We only support projects with independent Russian partners who are still interested in international cooperation. And the largest thematic field of our portfolio is no doubt culture. And this is one of the areas where we see possibilities for cooperations in the current situation. Many of the independent project partners are artists and cultural organizations. So therefore, we would like to tell you more specifically about what the Barnes Secretariat do when it comes to cultural international cooperation. Yes, because uh, of course the Barnes region uh, has a rich cultural life and several creative and talented cultural workers and artists. The cultural networks in the region are strong and at the same time we see that the Barnes region has become an exciting destination for artists who belong to other parts of the world, as some of the audience here today. The Barnes region is more often used as an arena for development of new cross-border contemporary art and culture, often in an interaction between artists from the region and artists from the outside world. To contribute to the realization of larger art and cultural projects with a focus on the High North, the Norwegian Barn Secretariat teamed up with the two Norwegian Ministries of Culture and uh, Foreign Affairs and the counties of Norland and Troms and Finnmark and created the financing program Barnskult. The Barnes Cult program was launched in 2008 and so far over 250 projects have received support. The program uh, supports projects which involve professional artists and cultural workers. And the main criterion is that there is participation both from uh, Norwegian and Russian side. The we are, of course, very happy if the projects involve, uh, involve participants from other countries as well, but we can uh, unfortunately only cover the uh, Norwegian and the Russian costs. And for those of you who have already visited the uh, Arctic Art Summit's uh, webpage, uh, and if you haven't, I would highly recommend you to do so, uh, you surely have noticed that the Barron Secretariat has a spotlight there. We present uh, our organization, of course, but most of our spotlight is dedicated to presentations of organizations and projects that have received grants from, from the Barron's Cult program. These projects show what the cooperation used to look like back in the normal days. And now we will highlight some of the projects that have taken place under more extreme circumstances. Yeah, we want to introduce a couple of the fine artists and organizations that have uh, realized Barnes Cult projects recently. And let's talk about uh, one of the projects that have been taking place, a project that turned out to be a very special happening since its main activity happened on February 25th, the day after the war started. To talk about the project, we have invited the Norwegian partner, but first a small film from the event. Aller 
Det første gang skal Nordboere i Norge og Sovjetunionen møtes skjerm mot skjerm for å snakke sammen om aktuelle temaer. Og dette møtet... Vi er veldig glad for at vi har nå kommet til dette, til denne dialogen. Og vi er klart til i dag å lære hverandre å kjenne bedre. Vi har kommet til dette programmet med stor glede. Og mitt spørsmål er, er det engstelse for de kraftverkene også på Kolahelvøya? Spørsmålet ikke er helt riktig stilt. Våre barn skal få en ren redd. Jeg vil inn på dette med kvinnen igjen. Her i Nord-Norge har vi et merkbart problem. De unge jentene, de som kan bli mor, de reiser sørover. Finnes det i Norge en lov som forbyr krigspropaganda? Jeg har så lyst til å se dere og invitere dere hjem til meg. Har dere lyst til å komme til meg på besøk? Uh, with us here we have Karl Christian Lein Störmer who organized this project together with the Russian partners in Friday Milk. Uh, unfortunately we did not uh, manage to have uh, Shanna and Oleg with us uh, today but we are so happy that uh, you could make it. And first, uh, since it was only in Norwegian and partly Russian, could you just talk a little bit about the concept of, of your project, the, yeah. the background and history? I think maybe uh, Zana and Oleg is watching us on stream, so yeah, <laughs> we say hello. Uh, um, well, as you probably could tell, uh, this was not shot this year. Uh, this was sort of an intro vignette we made uh, based on the original Fjernsynsbro, which was, I guess, inspired by something called the Space Bridge, which was between the US and, and Soviet uh, a few years earlier. So this was a TV broadcast in 1988, uh, the first time uh, Norwegians and, and, and Soviet people were going to speak live via satellite. And, and I, I had honestly never heard of it until it was actually Jana uh, and Oleg who showed me this, the, the original show. And, and uh, I think the concept of Fjernsynsbro New Era, which we have done, uh, the whole idea came very instantly when we saw the original show. Uh, and that we were going to do a reenactment uh, in present day. Uh, but we planned it for maybe two years and as you can imagine the the we couldn't foresee the setting uh of the fjernsynsbro 2.0 as it turned out and 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 um, and originally the the main sort of core of of our project was that the, we were yet again divided but because of covid uh, so the whole like Cold War uh, war thing was sort of more like this kitschy 80s uh, thing. Uh, so uh, it, it became something very different that we had uh, foreseen. We will get uh, back to that uh, in a few uh, seconds, but could you just uh, tell us about uh, first like how did you get in touch with the partner in Russia originally and uh, and how was it to plan this uh, project uh, in this uh, uh, Covid uh, time with the closed borders? Uh, I, I, my background is in music and punk music and, and, and uh, so-called DIY touring where you organize tours yourself and do everything yourself and on a very like small gritty level and in 2009, I was uh, able to go to Russia for the first time. In 2010, we did the first long tour in Russia, which was uh, a very uh, intense and, and, and a beautiful experience, where we met uh, a lot of uh, people that became close friends and, 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 and collaborators further down the line, and including uh, Oleg and, uh, and Jana. So I know them from that and when, when you meet people in that sort of setting, you d instantly sort of develop this uh, bond uh, of trust that maybe goes, uh, that, that sticks. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of stuff and I've been going to Russia whenever I had the chance to, to participate in, in their project. This was sort of the first project we were going to do together. 
and it came and well actually the story is that we were doing this other tour project in russia uh that we had some funding for also and um and then COVID came so that got cancelled and this sort of was like uh well let's do something uh and this idea came up yeah actually the main event of, of uh, the project was held here on the day after the russian invasion of ukraine and what was your first thought about going through with the project after you had seen the news? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've, if this had happened two or three days later, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, it's my gut feeling. Uh, it was uh, to anyone who was here in Kirkenes during that week. It was during Bon Spectacle. You, 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 there was this very special uh, atmosphere. Uh, and um, I'm just trying to go, <laughs> go, go back to those days because uh, you are already sort of under a sort of a pressure trying to organize something in a format that uh, I hadn't done before. I, I usually, I, I've never, it, it was essentially a live TV show that I have no idea how to do. I, I do films, but that's different. You can hide away for six years and then release it but now it's going to be live so we were stressed already and it was a complicated operation uh, on both sides uh, in, in nickel and here uh, and then sort of the weekly like and then there's the com communicative aspect of it where even us the main organizers really because all the compensation was uh, on like via zoom and like we had to i think interpret each other between the lines uh, a lot uh, and there were and then in the last couple of days like the the, the last day obviously it, it became it felt very like critical and you know there was people who withdrew uh, on the day of the show and, and, and like, so until we actually were on stage and, and the tapes were rolling, we, we had, we didn't know if, if it was going to happen. Mm. So, uh, from your own side, because I also remember these days here on the 23rd yeah. of February, it was also the Kirkenes conference. Uh, everybody were happy for meeting again and now COVID was soon to be over and everything would be great. Yeah. So the atmosphere in those days here was very specific. Yeah. So did you like think that now we just have to cancel? Uh, on my behalf, no. No, I, it, it felt a million times more important than it did uh, two weeks before. Uh, and I think, I don't know if anyone was here of, of the audience who was, uh, during, it was a very, uh, I, I think one of the, I think it was like a, someone described it as a 90 minutes of like collective healing mm. or like just uh, because Again, there was a lot of between the lines and what can we talk about, what like, obviously you can't do this show without mentioning the current situation. And, and we, of course, had made all with, with our, uh, uh, the host, uh, Nora, um, who is an experienced journalist, who's, uh, uh, she knows how, like to be on air and, and that sort of pressure. And, and we had this sort of uh, plan uh, for the show where we're like, uh, the plan was to sort of like gradually, uh, maybe gently touch upon the, poke the elephant in the room. Uh, but we, what we didn't control obviously was the participants. And I, I remember very clearly the, like this, I mean, I think the, the star of the show, which was, uh, her name is Friedel from Jarfjord, uh, who was in the original show. And, and and she just took the mic after five her first com she just took a big knife and into the balloon and like uh, and and from there on it was uh, w people could talk more openly so uh, it was uh, but it was very high attention i think on both sides yeah because in the original 
cast from 88 people. Uh, I mean, the idea was that Norwegians and Russians could meet via satellite and ask each other questions like, how do you feel about us? Do you want to come visit? And also I heard some uh, asking questions about, they were worrying about like uh, nuclear uh, accidents and so on. Um, so were there like any particular questions like from the Norwegian side to the Russian side or could you elaborate a bit more about what this Friedel said for instance? I guess we could see a little clip uh, from the show yeah. where uh, also one of my... Uh, <laughs> it's funny when you're making films you sort of re you reduce humans to characters so you say uh, this my favorite character but also my favorite humans uh, Torbjörn who's, who's, uh, who's uh, a cab driver here in Kirkenes and also a professional Santa, true story, uh, who has, a, a, his wife is from Russia, and, uh, and I, again, I, I, just, I invited him to join the panel because uh, I know his, his uh, you know, we just have a feeling that's, that someone has something valuable to, 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 uh, to offer, and, and he, di he didn't say anything up until the very end of the show. And I think that was maybe f to me, and I think a lot of people there, that the maybe the strongest moment of the uh, inter interactions. So we, we can, and it's still it's a work in progress, so it'll bear. It, the sound is not blah blah blah, but I think you'll understand. Ja, mitt namn är er Torbjörn Martin Nilsen, oprinnlig fra Hammerfest. Eh, jeg er beriket med en russisk kone som jeg har fått dele livet med i 21 år. Har gitt mig barn, og nu også barnebarn. Og jeg vokste opp i Hammerfest, og upplevde det som jeg ikke ønsker at noen barn skal oppleve. Eh, min mor var tysk, og... Eh, Hverdagen min var ganske, ganske tøff i, i Hammerfestby. Og det som jeg tenker veldig, veldig på nu, det er at mine barn og mine barnebarn og faktisk oldebarn skal slippe å oppleve det han Torbjørn opplevde som barn. Og unngå at de barna som sitter igjen nu og skal få, få det veldig, veldig vondt etter det som skjer i Russland nu. Takk. Jeg har jo egentlig lyst til å spørre Nickel, hva slags tanker dere gjør dere rundt det våre publikum her deler av betraktningen? Ja, mysli, mysli veldig... Dissidenter har fått ned siden veldig tragiske og sopplistiske. For jeg har kommet fra Øst-Ukraina, jeg er født og oppvokst i Kharkiv fylke, der det er alt av mulig bomping. Jeg har bodd der i 32 år. Jeg er russisk borger, helt av staten av, for jeg kom hit under sovjetperioden. Jeg har da av den sovjetiske statsforskapen og nå den russiske, men jeg er født ukrainer i Øst-Ukraina, der tradisjonelt er det de varmeste følelsene og brusene har bestemt om stand i verden. Så det som skjer nå, er, uh, selv om jeg ikke involverer meg, så ikke blir plutselig at man ikke har skyld av hvordan det har ført seg hit, for, for, hvordan vi har kommet hit, det blir bare verre. Det er en forferdelig, forferdelig følelse, så det, det er som om hjertene blir ble revet i to. Altså i alle disse dagene nå siden 21. år. For the English-speaking uh, audience, just give us a brief uh, wrap-up of what uh, the topic was for this discussion. Yeah, the, the Tor Torbjörn told that, that he, he had grown up in northern Norway uh, right after the Second World War with a German mom and, and that his big fear was that... Uh, uh, mother. Mother? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that... Because that, he experienced horrible things, the bullying, and, and uh, which is actually why he chose to become a Santa Claus. Uh, uh, and that his big fear was that kids now 
of of of, of Russian descent or would uh, would experience the same thing here, and and then uh, the 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 woman on the on the Russian side, uh, and it was I think that was that was I, I I was honestly like amazed of how how blunt she was. Uh, I think it was uh, it was it was a very special moment during the the broadcast. Was, uh, yeah. Yeah, could you just say in English, uh, what did she say? You said she uh, was blunt, but uh, yeah, how, uh, uh, what did she, she express? She, uh, that she, she went uh, at the moment where we're not supposed to even mention the, the situation or, or where she, 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 uh, she, she told about her, her background being Ukrainian and, and how this situation just shattered her heart and, 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 and so forth. So, and, and just... Uh, I don't know. I, I, that at that very moment, I think just just to 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 express anything felt like uh, a a, um, a uh, dangerous thing to do. So yeah, it was um, one of many very powerful moments I think during that session. Do you have any uh, plans for future cooperation with the with your partners in Friday Milk? Yeah, <laughs> like I, I think it's more important than ever to 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 to, and, and we 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 talk all the time and 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 uh, and uh, as I said for this project, oh, it's almost like I felt like. Without the context, the the whole thing would have been like just this kitschy, like in COVID, who who cares at this point? It's like it, it just took on a whole another meaning, and I'm so glad that we were able that we were able to do it. Uh, and um, but of course, it's as as someone described, like the the old the the first Fjernsynsbro was marked like the 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 beginning of the opening, and this sort of marked the closing of the door uh, but but uh, at at that time but uh, I'm very happy that we were able to sort of at least capture that moment and to to be able to look back uh, hopefully and, and 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 with with some distance and and when things have gone in a better direction later on but that uh, there's something, yeah. So what we're doing, we're working on, we're sort of going to like narrow it down and, and make it sort of a, a film out of this that, that hopefully will be ready within the end of the year. Well, thanks, uh, Carl Christian. This has been really interesting to hear about. And uh, it is obvious also that uh, global politics uh, has a big effect on our, our little part of the uh, Nor Northern Europe. So uh, thank you so much for uh, talking with us today. Thank you for having me and <laughs> Ulegen Sonnhaus mm. yeah. on, on the other end of the yeah. satellites. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>